Welcome to Living Free, and thank you for joining us online this morning. I'm coming to you from Main Street in Portland, from what many would consider downtown. Portland is the home to 13,000 people, with 191,000 in our county. That's a lot of people. Out of 95 counties in Tennessee, we're number eight in population. But as populous as our county is, it's nothing compared to the world at 7.8 billion. Many of us have never given thought to the world and all the people therein. We may not even consider the many people in our own city unless we're in a hurry and setting in traffic. And then we wonder, where did all these people come from? Outside of our family and friends, we rarely give thought to others unless we have a need. That need may take us to the doctor. The need may cause us to engage the cashier at the grocery store. The need may lead us to give our order to the server at the restaurant. But outside of those simple encounters and others like them, our circles can be limited and our concerns for people even less. For a few, that may be intentional, but for the majority, it simply goes unchecked unless you're made aware. How many times have you offered to help someone when you were made aware of their situation? Someone you didn't know. You helped with groceries. You bought them a meal. You paid a bill. You gave them a ride to the doctor. You watched their kids in some way. You reached out to offer help because you became aware. In a world of 7.8 billion, or even a city of 13,000, it's easy to live unaware. But what if others became your focus? What if the teller at the bank, what if the cashier at the store, what if the server at the restaurant, the person at the gym, the lady at the coffee house, the guy at the office, what if they became a priority? If there was ever a person who's aware of people, it's your Creator. Before the first man and woman were created, God was aware of what would happen in them, so He devised a plan. John chapter 1 and verse 14 says, The Word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. John 3.16 reminding each of us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. In a world where it's easy to overlook another human being, Jesus never has. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I've been a parent for almost 22 years. As many parents can attest, a child out of view in a public place can be frightening. When my oldest was little, she thought it was fascinating and sometimes funny to hide in the clothes racks at the department stores. One minute she would be walking beside me and in the next second I was looking like a crazy man shouting her name and searching the aisles. By the grace of God, we always found her inside a clothes rack innocently having a moment of make-believe. In that moment, my child was lost from me and every fiber of my being wanted to find her for her safety and her well-being. She had no idea the consequences of being away from her parent but I did, so I made it my mission to find her. God has made it His mission to find you. Why? Because like the first man and woman who hid from God because of their sinful choices, God refuses to allow sin to be the sum total of your life. He knows what you're up against in this world, and He doesn't want you to face it alone. So Jesus became flesh. God walked where you walked. He experienced all the temptations you go through, but without sin. This perfect, spotless lamb surrendered his life on a cross, dying for your sins, your disobedience to a holy God, simply because for God so loved you. God doesn't want you to hide from him. He seeks to find you so that you can know the Father's love and walk alongside your Father throughout this life. It's in that relationship with him that you find love, belonging, and purpose. How would your life be different if you allowed yourself to come out of hiding? How would your life change if you purposefully walked alongside the Father? Each of us find ourselves in a new normal. 
COVID-19 has caused the world literally to be turned upside down. From calculated caution to halted hysteria, people are looking for meaning and purpose in the midst of this pandemic. So people turn on the news and what they hear is contradictions, debates, and politics. Please don't misunderstand me. The virus has claimed lives and that's something that we as a nation, a community, and an individual must contend with, and we are. You have a responsibility to do your part. I have a responsibility to do mine. Each of us must determine what those responsibilities are and do good by all. But part of doing good by all is helping others and yourself to put this moment in perspective. Proverbs 29, 18 tells us, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law, the Word of God, is joyful. If you allow, God will bring guidance to your life as you walk beside Him in this relationship. The world may seem to be upside down, if not in this pandemic, then in the next unforeseen trial that may come. But He will cause your perspective to never change as you stay focused on His direction. To do good by all is to help others see the Father in the midst of this upside down moments, so that when chaos comes, you and others are firmly planted on the foundation foundation that is Jesus who brings them meaning and purpose. How can you help others to walk in meaning and purpose? My text, the portion of the Bible that I want you to focus on this morning is Luke chapter 15. I won't take the time to read the chapter this morning, but I would encourage you to take a moment sometime today and read through the story for yourself. As you read through the Gospels, you find that Jesus was a storyteller. Not a storyteller in the sense of him telling an untruth, but one who could illustrate what he was saying through vivid stories. Basically, he shared eternal truths that could be understood on your level. In these stories, you find heaven. You find bits and pieces of who God is and what He can do and will do in the lives of those who walk alongside Him, with Luke chapter 15 being no exception. Chapter 15 contains three stories that Jesus shares, with the opening two verses setting the stage. As the chapter begins, the religious people and sinners were coming to hear Jesus speak, and as they were coming, The religious people were complaining or grumbling about how Jesus welcomed and ate with sinners. And this is why we have these three stories. The first story is about a lost sheep. The second story is about a lost coin. And the third story is about a lost son. As we look into these stories, I appreciate these types of teaching moments from Jesus. Why? Because he brings clarity to an otherwise scattered life. He helps you and me through His Word, not only to know where to start, faith in Him, but how to continue and what the result of that will be. There's a lot of noise in the world, rhetoric, yet Jesus brings guidance through all of the confusion, through all the strife, worry, and fear. He defines who you are in Him and what you were created for. You don't have to change your direction when a tragedy strikes. You simply remain faithful to His direction. As Jesus hosted the religious people and sinners in chapter 15, the stories Jesus told not only declared his purpose, but they gave precedent to ours. In the first story, a man had a hundred sheep and one of them was lost. Jesus asked the question, if one of your sheep was lost, would you not leave the 99 and go and find the one? He answered his own question by saying, yes, you would, even celebrating with others when you found it. In the second story, we find a similar example when a woman was looking for a lost coin. He asked the question again, would you not look intently throughout your entire house to find the one coin? He answered, yes, you would, even celebrating by calling your neighbors and letting them know the coin was found. In both of these stories, the comparison is to a person coming to faith in Jesus by changing their mind about God and putting their faith in Him. This leads us to the third story, one of the two sons who left his father and went to live a selfish life. In essence, he went to hide from his father. But as the story unfolds, it doesn't take long for the son to run out of money and find himself in need. 
This is when the son realizes what he had in the presence of his father, and he changed his mind about his dad and went home. As he appeared on the horizon, the father was waiting, only to run to him, welcoming him home. This story showing the great love of the father to his child. There are many who have never heard of the father's love, and there are some who have lost their way by allowing the rhetoric, the noise of the world to pull them away from the father's side. Not everyone understands why Jesus came, but these stories speak to his purpose and they illustrate the value that Jesus places on the one. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came to demonstrate and declare the Father's love. In doing so, the lost are found. In doing so, he sets a precedent that you should never lose sight of the one because they're valued and celebrated by the Father. I can understand that as a parent when my oldest, as a toddler, suddenly disappeared from my care. Is there a person that you know today who's lost? Is there a person that you know today that has, for whatever reason, walked away from the Father's love? Maybe 7.8 billion is more than you care to imagine. Maybe 191,000 is too big of a picture. Maybe 13,000 is still a stretch in your thoughts. How about one? Can we take a lesson from Jesus? Can His purpose become ours? What does it look like to focus on your neighbor across the yard? What would it look like, student, to focus on your peer assigned to the seat next to yours in English class? What would it look like to start a conversation with the person who happens to be in the gym the same time you are every week? What would it look like to focus on the teller, the cashier, the server who consistently takes care of your needs? Can you make one a priority? Can you go out of your way this week to show one the love of the Father? God values the one and He longs to celebrate with the one who chooses a relationship with Him. Jesus made that possible through His death and resurrection. His example gives clear direction for you and me every day. May we look for the one, showing and reminding them of the Father's love, praying they will change their mind about the Father and trust His direction for their lives. May you become aware of others and may you be reminded of the Father's love. Perhaps, like Jesus, you can make it your purpose to put the two together. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, we pray today, Lord, if there be one who is listening to this service today who may not know you, I pray that before this day is out, they will bend their knee, they will choose to believe in what you have done for them, and they will invite you into their heart and life. If there be one today who may have followed you may be serving you, living for you, Lord, but we just haven't been aware of those who are around us who are away from the Father's love. May you help us to be concerned about the One. May the One become our priority as we share the love of the Father with them once again. I pray for your blessing, your keeping over each and every one of us. And it's in Christ's name I ask these things.